Hello, Facebook friends. Welcome from, <laughs> I was rushing around a little bit, so. Uh, welcome to Stitch House. We're gonna be talking about the M7 today. And as you can see, we have a very nice uh, long sleep machine. From the neck to the needle, 13 and 3 quarters inches of sewing space. What's nice about that is, is that when you have uh, something even as large as a quilt, you're able to get huge amounts rolled up into the machine and still be able to do free motion quilting. This is actually a uh, full-size quilt, and I'll show it to you in a little bit uh, on into the program, but um, the space now is just uh, amazing. Where I'm used to 11 inches, now we have 13 and 3 quarters inches. Another thing that you might notice is how open the front of the machine is, especially where your needle is concerned. I can actually tell now if my thread is in all the guides and also I can tell especially for monofilament thread I would be able to see that all the way down into the foot area. One of the nice things about the machine also is the new threading system. It threads just like any other machine till you get down to the end. When you get into the needle bar See how tight that is? I can't even pull that out. You're going to get to the needle bar and pull it all the way to the left. Once you're there, let me touch the screen so we can get a little more light. This is gonna be cool. Look how much more light. Halo light all the way around, no shadows. I can get it all the way to the left of the needle uh, guide bar into the threader and cut it off with my handy thread cutter on the side, back to front and it locks it up in there. I can put my foot down or I can leave it up and just push down and my needle is threaded. That easy. Another thing that's nice about the machine is the easy access buttons up through the front. Currently, I do not have my foot pedal plugged in, so I can run the machine by my start-stop. And believe it or not, I feel I have more control of the machine with my start-stop button than I do with my foot pedal. And the other cool thing is, is I can hit all of these buttons and sew at the same time. Now, yes, my hand is much larger, but that just gives you an idea how much actual space we have to work with. Um, you still have a nine millimeter wide uh, stitch plate. So here, if I push on the back of my foot, it comes out. Notice though, right here, the superior feed system of this machine, every time you stop, the feed dogs drop. And that gives you, uh, pardon my reach here, this gives you this option. So let's say that this was black silk and I was doing a um, straight stitch on it. When I place my fabric under there, there's nothing grabbing my fabric. And I've done that before in some garment construction where I put something very thin and light in there and the feed dogs will actually grab my thread and pull the threads out from the side. With this machine, I do not have to worry about lowering the feed dogs. Every time I stop, they drop automatically. And it's a really nice advantage uh, with a nice feeding system like that. Nine millimeter wide. So from left to right, you got a nine millimeter wide um, space. Also, if you look directly down on the needle plate, and I'll give you a better angle of this, which is really cool. No screws are involved in the changing of this needle plate. On the screen itself, I'll push this little lock key and the screen comes up that it's locked. And then this little button here 
has a little arrow that's folding up from the side. There's no arrow there, but what I can do is I can push this and watch the needle plate. Isn't that amazing? I can just pull that off and I'm ready to do whatever I want. Also, when you look down in there, uh, it is almost an enclosed space. So you're able to take your Q-tip and you're able to take your little brushes and to be able to clean that out uh, easily. Um, the other cool thing is our bobbin uh, case system itself. So inside here, there is a uh, light that shines across that shows us how much thread is left on our bobbin case or on our bobbin. And um, which I think is pretty cool because if you've ever been one of those people who likes to live dangerously and you're sewing this long last little bit of your quilt and it stops a half an inch from the end because you didn't have enough thread. This will actually give you a predetermined amount of thread. So if you wanted 12 inches left on there, you could set it up for different uh, widths and leftovers on there. When the machine on this one, when it tells you you don't have enough thread, it's pretty much telling you only have a short, very short amount of thread left on your um, bobbin case. So the bobbin case is easily dropped in. So you, you can pull that out and um, clean it. There are optional accessories. So if you do buy any Janome machine, I can talk to you more about the different bobbin cases that we have. And then um, all we have to do next is take our needle plate, slide it, and drop it. Immediately the magnet attracts that. This magnet is not that strong outside of there. So this is completely safe uh, a mechanism for you to use. And then um, you do not have to take off your foot to change the plate. I just did that to make it a little uh, more visual, but I can leave my foot on and change that. Right here's your bobbin. So we do have the easy set on bobbin. You just slide it right around and come directly down into um, that and I have to make sure that I have my finger on it. I'm too, I, eventually you'll figure out I have a lot of OCD so I do things a certain way but you don't have to do it this way but that will get into there. And so you may say, well, how do I know it's in there? On this very first stitch that I take, I'm gonna have a little quarter inch piece of bobbin thread. That's really nice. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you, this cool thing. One more time, I'm gonna pop that up. Can you see our bobbin, or our needle plate has different degrees. So this 90 right here is actually a quarter inch behind my needle. So if I was doing a set in seam, I have a line right there that tells me where to start. I have a 60 degree, a 45 degree, and that all helps with the different Lemoyne stars and piece work that we might have to do set in seams. And over here we have a 5 8 inch right down here. And then on the needle plate itself, depending on which foot I'm using, has a quarter inch guide out towards the front. So we'll put that back in. We'll put the bobbin, back, bobbin case back in first. And inside the bobbin case, there's also a little uh, arrows here that shows you which is the right direction to have your bobbin case in. Drop that. And then I can do my uh, bobbing again. So once I've done that, my uh, screen will say the lock screen. I still can't do anything. I'm going to push the lock key. My machine comes back on. I'm ready to go. So I'm going to just do a little uh, straight stitch here for you. If you can see, I'm just sliding this underneath here. There's no grabbing. So I'm gonna push the start button, and right here's my speed. And that little click sound is just engaging my feed dogs. And right here I can see that my guide is not there. There we go. And so here I can go here. And just depending on how fast you like to sew, and then 
this is the cool thing for me. So I said I have more control. So if I reach up here in the stop button and I hold this in, the machine goes half the speed and I'm able to look directly down into my sewing field and I can pull my finger off right when I get to that point I wanna stop. I can hit my lock stitch button. It blinks, I can push start. It's sewing a lock stitch in that exact point. So whenever I'm doing, um, you know, set in seams or if I'm doing uh, some garment construction where I have to start or stop with a lock stitch, that's how much control I have. Now all I have to do is push the uh, scissor cutter, cuts my thread, lifts my foot, and then um, we're right back at where we started. And nice stitch all the way through. This machine uh, comes with this really, uh, well, first off, you don't have to buy an extra table. It comes with this extension table. This table gives you about 15 inches of workspace uh, front and back, which means it's gonna support your quilt. It also gives you this cool little drawer. And so you can put your little bobbins and things in here, but it will also fit your needle plates. This machine is traditional as some of the other Janome machines. You get the decorative stitch plate, which is nine millimeters wide. You get uh, the straight stitch plate, which has three needle holes, so you can do center, left, and right. And you can also get my favorite needle plate, which is called the HP uh, Professional um, Plate. That position right there is directly over the hook and it gives you a perfectly straight stitch while you're quilting. And um, we're going to do that. But look at all these feet. You get what we call an AccuFeed Flex Foot. This is a wider all-purpose foot. I would use this when I'm doing garment construction only because this all-purpose foot um, is a traditional foot. And as you know, if you take uh, plaids and you get them together and you pin and you pin and then you put it under there, this foot always wants to push the fabric forward as the bottom is feeding the thread. And so by the time you get to the other end, your things aren't matched. Well, if you put this foot on, it locks into the feed dog system and it moves at the same speed as your feed dogs giving you not only the seven that are underneath there, another two. And it reaches frontwards and pulls all your fabric straight back. And I'm gonna uh, show you that in a second, but look at all these other feet. You get the HP foot. This is gonna be a perfect quarter inch. It's probably about three threads short. So it actually uh, compensates for the fold over the fabric when you're piecing. And you get the ruler work foot which I think is amazing because um, this foot actually has clearance that you can use your long arm rulers. So I'm actually buying long arm rulers to quilt with. So when I get a long arm, I can actually just use those. But you also have your darn feet and your open toe darn foot. This one I would use if I was doing free motion quilting and I had applique or some sort of a glue underneath it because when my needle comes up, this foot comes down and pushes the fabric off of it. And so there's a lot of cool stuff you can learn here at uh, uh, Stitch House. And I'd, be, I'd love to spend some time with you even to show you some of this stuff. But here is our uh, free motion uh, quilting feet. We have a closed toe, open toe, and our echo foot. But the cool thing about these is they go right on our regular ankle. And so I can put whichever foot I like. I can reach from the back here so you can see better. Put that there and I simply lift the front and now I have a free motion foot. How uh, sure am I? I'm going to go up here. And over here has all of our regular sewing things. I can control most everything from this bar. I'm gonna push this t-shirt and I'm gonna tell it I want to quilt, and I want to free motion. And then here it shows, remember this foot, our PDF foot, our PDH foot. I want 
to use this foot. So I'm gonna push this button right here. Same foot. Now watch. Now I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do this the fearless way. I'm just gonna put this under here and go. So we're all set. I'm gonna push start. And then it gives me a chance to pull my thread up. This is not going to hang over anything important. So I'm just gonna keep going. Now watch. So up here I have brown thread and I have a longer stitch, but because I'm moving the same speed, my stitches are pretty much all the same length. So here I'm gonna push that, I'm gonna cut this. That's how easy it is just to use the snap-on foot. I'm gonna look first. <laughs> look, it's all white. So my brown thread did not come to the back. And if you look real close, the white thread did not come to the top. I can actually quilt on this machine with two different colored threads and feel pretty safe that I'm going to have a nice balance with my thread. And it's all the system inside here. As you watch this foot come down, you'll see it bounce back up. So if I'm just going to push the lower foot button, did you see how that came up? It's sensed the thickness of my batting and fabric, and now look, no locking of that. Now if I use the other foot, now what? I can't move it. So when you have the straight stitch two for the free motion quilting, it will uh, sense it. And then once you find a nice speed that you usually quilt at, auto tension adjustment. It's very, very cool system that this machine has. And the feet just pop on and off. Now you get like, um, you get over 27 feet. But look at the different feet that you get. You get the open toe applique foot along with your regular foot. Now this is the decorative stitch, which is a see-through foot reason why we like to use that is there's a little valley on the back side of the foot and that way uh, when you're doing decorative stitches uh, you don't smash your stitches not only do you get a quarter inch foot with a guide which is a traditional looking foot that we've had in the past you also get it without the guide you get your little rolled hem and I can show you how to use this this really works really well you also get a zipper foot but most of the Janome machines, you have to buy a invisible zipper foot. This one comes with it. You got um, various uh, blind hem. Now, when my grandmother was teaching me how to um, sew garments, we did a blind hem stitch and we did not have a blind hem stitch foot. We had the traditional um, all-purpose foot, which I have uh, conveniently oh, forgot. What the foot. Oh, here. So this is the foot that I use. So I can actually do a blind hem foot with this one, but you get the blind hem foot. But we did not have a free arm machine. We had a machine just like this that was did not have a free arm on it. But because of the space and the openness, I can show you how to hem a pair of jeans on this machine. This machine will have up to, um, I would say 12 layers of denim safely, and I can still do a nice um, balanced stitch. You do get all your bobbins, you get a couple thread nets, screwdriver, guides. This little guide uh, also will fit in your regular arm of your all-purpose. So if I wanted to uh, do this, I could do a decorative stitch down a piece of fabric and have it every two inches or every distance that I would like. And again, uh, you get all these little attachments and cool things uh, that you can use on this machine as well as everybody's favorite, well, at least mine. That's for those little RFL and different threads that have the smaller opening. Um, 
Now, all this stuff fits into this little box here. All your needle plates and everything. Um, the screen itself, let's go back. I'm just gonna go back to the regular straight stitch. As you look here, you can see here, on all the straight stitches, you can actually move the needle left or right. Now, on this machine right here, if I push the minus sign, did you see it went to 4.4, 4.3, 4.2? I have 45 positions to the left of the needle and 45 to the right. That means if I went to a class where it said that I had to have a quarter inch and I took that class and I got home, but I didn't have that machine, I could simply lay my fabric under there, line my needle to the edge of the fabric, to the edge of the foot, find out where that quarter inch was, line it up, and I could continue my process at home. Most Janome feet will continue from the smaller end of the machine, even if it's a five millimeter wide machine, all the way up to the nine, only because we're able to um, adjust that foot and the foot is consistent. Right here is our stitch length. Now, it will come up to a general stitch length. You can change it though, I can just push that button. But on this machine, we have a little more precision uh, to that. Right over here to the right, we have a zigzag uh, button, which is this 4.2. As I go to the right, I can move the needle all the way to the right. And you can see it moving back and forth as I do the precision placement. So it's important that you know how many stitch positions that we get because I can pretty much um, get precision of any quarter inch. Even if somebody else comes over to my house, I can put it on here and say, okay, use the edge of this foot and the needle's right there and you're good to go. You can do that with this machine, which is really nice. Same way with the stitch length. I can go all the way up to five uh, millimeter stitch length. These are um, in millimeters, and I can explain that to you more, but you already know what a normal stitch length is. And so they're actually in um, that increment. So um, while you see it here, once you sew it out, it makes sense. But um, I always uh, do quilting and piecing at about 1.8. I do paper piecing at one point you know, six, but look, I can change it all just with that one little uh, movement. The other cool thing is, is that the machine knows I'm doing it and it's automatically changing my tension as I go. And um, uh, that's really a cool function. Over here, there's 37 pages of stitches. If I push the next page, I'm still in the utility section. As I push the next page, now I'm in the buttonhole section. But I can keep pushing these all the way through and it will get all the way to the end. Or if you noticed up here, here's the utility stitches. Here's my buttonhole stitches. That button is my category of stitches. So if there's a particular stitch or something that I'm looking for, like quilting, I can just push that and there I'm on my quilting page. But let's say uh, I don't want to fool around with all that, and I'm here on the first page. This last icon right here that looks like a page, I can push it, and it shows me um, all the different stitches that are in the utility, and all the buttonholes, and I can go through here and say, oh, it's this one I want. I touch it, it comes up on the screen, and I'm good to go. Do we have any questions? How can we learn to quilt from home using Quilt Block Advisor? Oh, so, okay. So we're gonna jump to the fun stuff, I think. So um, right across here, you have all uh, the functions of the machine, but there's actually even really cool things, especially for quilters. Notice down here, there's a little uh, QR code. So every time I've changed the stitch, this has changed. I'm gonna show you 
cool things all with one little project. So I'm gonna push this little circle here and it gives us a quick stitch select a quilt black advisor. Look at that, that's what I'm looking for right here. You're gonna push the circle, you're gonna push quilt black advisor, you're gonna push that button. It gives us six different predetermined blocks that have all of our pieces um, uh, predetermined. And it's actually a really cool idea. So let's just do the log cabin. If I push the log cabin button, it tells me right now, if I wanna do a six inch square, it tells me that my center is gonna be uh, one and 11 30 seconds, which is about, let's say, just one and a half inches. So A is one and a half inches. This one here, which is purple, is also one and a half inches. So A, it's um, going to spiral out each one of these. And it says seven rows, so seven rows out. I can increase the amount of rows if I want to, and it changes all the measurements. But look at this, I can go all the way up to a 12 inch block. And it tells me the different uh, measuring uh, widths and stuff. But here's the cool thing. So I use the AccuQuilt and people laugh at me, but look, I can get up to um, right here. I'm gonna get it. There is a two and a quarter inch die that comes with the AccuQuilt cutter and it will finish to a 16 inch um, block. Now, how do I know what lengths and everything to cut my little strips? I'm going to show you here on my phone. You can actually go um, to, now I have a Samsung phone. So I went to the um, Samsung Play Store and I got this little app that says AccuSpark. I'm just simply gonna uh, push that. Right here is our QR code. And then um, what I'm going to do on the app is push the little QR code up in the top right. It's going to open up my camera. I can move my camera up. And look at that, it's telling me I'm gonna cut my pieces to specific length and specific uh, thing. And it's telling me up here what, what lengths and everything. And it tells me even how to sew the blocks together. But here's the cool thing. So if we go to the, Le Le they call it Lemon Star, but it's actually a Lemoyne Star. But I'm, I'm weird like that. So I'm going to go all the way up to the largest block it'll make. And it actually is 40 inches. That's actually the size of a nice little table topper that you can use. Um, you can make this black and then sew and flip with a little piece of vinyl, or not vinyl, uh, flannel and you can have a nice little uh, tabletop. All I have to do, hit the little QR code. And now it's telling me down to the degree of how to hold my ruler and cut out how wide my strips are and even doing the um, corners, um, half square triangles right there on the screen. And like I was talking before, how to stop, start at 90 degrees, and how to stop and get you a nice set in seam. Will this work with anything else on the machine? Let's do this. So we can do this with any one of these uh, patches, but if I go back to the home screen, and let's say I go to this little uh, icon here, that is uh, my hand lick stitches. And let's say I want to do, um, this one looks really cool. Notice how it's a little wonky, but there's a reason because it's a hand lick stitch, it's not a machine lick stitch. If I keep doing that, when you sew that out, it really does look like you've actually sewn it by hand. But the cool thing is, is like if we do this, uh, let me go back to, that's it. So let's say if I did this one. I happen to know that that one goes out really nice. I can put uh, uh, 
six or 10 weight thread around my bobbin, not through the tension, just through the bobbin, I can put monofilament up through the top and the machine has already tightened my uh, tension up to what it needs to be um, to sew that. But I can come in here, go all the way up to like uh, probably about seven my monofilament is gonna pull that heavy thread up so it looks like I took time and actually hand stitched it. But it also tells me I can do that right here. So it talks about the hand lick stitches, the different styles, what you can do. It talks about how to thread it, how to change um, different aspects of the machine. Uh, if I go back to the home screen, it always goes back, you know, to that first stitch. If I was doing a uh, piece, let's say I was going to do applique and I was going to go around this curve. Well, you know, as well as I do, that if you're trying to do an applique stitch around the curve, you're going to have, you know, your knee lift, you're going to have all kinds of uh, things that you're doing all at once trying to turn the machine. Well, if I go here to my category, if I go here to my applique, I can pick uh, any of these stitches. I like number six. Number six gives me one stitch forward and a single bite in. I can adjust the width of my uh, stitch. I'm going to make it bigger so you can see it. And then I'm going to make that just a little longer. Okay. Now, the beauty about this is that if every stitch I took, I would have to reach back here, angle my fabric, but not on this machine right here. The very first button is my pivot feature. So I can look down, uh, guess who didn't wear his glasses? Oh, here they are. Um, so if I can do that, get my needles lined up, and then I can push start. And I can sew frontwards, it's gonna sew frontwards. And then every time, I'm gonna do it slower so you can see it. My foot comes up and I'm able to rotate on the needle so I can follow that uh, stitch. I'm gonna stitch frontwards and then push that. I can just tap that button, take one stitch at a time. Same that I could do with my foot pedal but now I'm able uh, to control. Like I said, I can actually control this very well. And I stitch frontwards and, and you get used to the uh, what pattern that you're doing and how you're going to do that. Now, am I sure that this is gonna be right? I'm gonna push the thread. And because I have my glasses on, look at that. And so I'm reaching in to my circle the whole way. And so with that pivot feature engaged, I'm able to do that. But I can ask, also use the pivot feature to chain piece. So after one piece is through there, I can add two more there. Remember though also that my feed dogs have dropped so my end of my fabric doesn't get rolled over and uh, stuff like that. There's a lot of cool features to the, this machine, but the, one of the best parts of it is it comes with a package and um, I just wanted to show you um, a little of that package right now. Remember we're doing block party here at Stitch House and we're actually cutting all those out on the, the Go Quilter. Oh. The Go Cube. With our M7 package, you actually get the electronic uh, Go Big cutter from AccuQuilt for free. One of the cool things about it is also that you actually get a pattern idea book. We are, you also receive the, um, wow, I know what it is. It's, um, oh, there it is, Flying Geese. Thank goodness for big print. My arms are getting shorter as I get older. Uh, and a cutting block. And so what you can do immediately out of the box is take your cutter and then I'm going to make flying geese with two different colors of fabric. I'm going to line this up here. 
And then I'm going to take my orange here. And I'm going to take my little So Dallas Demo Go cutting mat. And I'm going to slide it right in. Now, I do not have to do anything extra. I just let it push it through. And it pops out the other side. Now, when you look at it, though, biggest thing with any uh, active quilt dies is you're going to spin your mat because the static will actually leave your pieces stuck to your thing. So I'm gonna go like this. And just remember, so we have, uh, let's see, we got four of these. So I'm gonna put this one here. I'm gonna take one of these here. And then look at these. I've got the perfect size. Now notice also, if you can see, these are all blunt ended. Traditionally, they would come down to a point, and then when I would sew them together, these points would create dog ears, and there would just be more thickness in my fabric. The nice thing about the Go, uh, go Active Quilt Go Cutter is it cuts all those pieces off for you. So this is actually included with the purchase of your N7. And then in the future, which is what we're doing, is you can um, purchase um, the uh, mix and match die and you get all those blocks and opportunities to make quilts. You could make quilts for months just with one uh, uh, die cutting uh, box of mix and match. We uh, can show you this more if you have any questions and we can also show you more on um, the M7. I did want to show you um, the precision piecing of the machine is if you look here, you can see all my points are inside my block. And the nice thing about uh, the M7 with the HP foot is you get the perfect points in your garment and you can see them even down to the point here. I actually, uh, on my machine at home right now, I have the um, Accufy Flex Foot uh, and the um, Precision Piece and HP Foot on my machine. I made this, and this will be in a class uh, for the M7 coming up soon. Um, this is just simply a folded fabric, but look, there's uh, four pieces of fabric, two pieces of fabric for um, the front two pieces for the lining and then fold it over two pieces of batting and it stitched all the way through perfectly. I can't uh, tell you how nice that is to be able to sew something and have absolutely no worries about how that's going to actually uh, come out. One good thing about purchasing here at uh, so Dallas, or, uh, Stitch House is the fact that um, in the classroom for Janome, there is 12 M7s and you do not have to bring your machine in for us to um, help you. And any classes that we have will generally switch over to your 9400, your S9, and a lot of your piecing and other experiences. And I think this class is gonna be coming up soon. This is just regular uh, quilting, and then we have a pocket. And look again, all these two layers, and three layers of batting by this time, through all these two layers, well, four layers, because this is both folded underneath there. So the amount of thread and fabric and everything that's gone through there, and it's been perfectly um, sewn. You get uh, free one-on-one -on -one support as long as you own the machine. And I'm usually here when I'm not working uh, as a freelance educator for uh, Janome. And um, today I came in on my own just to give you a live demo on the M7 and how that works for you. And so if you have any questions, feel free to let the store know. And I'm sure if they are unable to answer it, I'll be able to uh, drop in and answer some of your questions also. 
And I thank you very much for checking in with us. We'll see you again soon.